Let's think about the thyroid gland in the neck just for a few minutes. Associated with the thyroid cartilage in the neck. It's thyrotropin releasing hormone. signals the anterior pituitary, the adenal hypothesis, to release TSH. TSH stimulates the thyroid to produce T3 and T4. Triiodothyronine and tetraiodothyronine Tetraiodothyronine might just be called thyroxine, and both of these collectively might be called thyroid hormone. So that's kind of how we'll operate for a few minutes here. If there's not enough thyroid hormone in an infant due to iodine deficiency, it's called cretinism, and this can be leading to profound intellectual impairment. If there's a low level of thyroid hormone because of an abnormality of the thyroid gland itself, this is called congenital hypothyroidism. In the adult, there is a condition called myxedema that can result from low thyroid hormone. It's a little confusing because high levels of TSH actually continue to stimulate the thyroid to produce more thyroid hormone and it just doesn't happen and it results in excessive colloidal tissue. The thyroid gland can get quite large in a goiter if a, a person has iodine deficiency. If there is hyperthyroidism, there is a common condition called Graves disease in which antibodies attack the thyroid, but at the same time mimic the effect of TSH, thus resulting in high thyroid hormone ultimately. This is Graves' disease. It might produce bulging eyes in the person who has this anomaly. We've also learned that somatostatin and growth hormone inhibiting hormone can actually have a negative effect and shut down this system. Let's talk about the cells of the thyroid gland just for a few minutes. The follicle cells of the thyroid are what produce the, the T3, T4, which results in the metabolic rate and growth effects that we see with thyroid hormone. There are other cells called parafollicular cells that release a hormone called calcitonin. And I think of it this way. I think of tone it down. Basically, calcitonin decreases blood calcium. There are parathyroid glands on the backside of the thyroid that have chief cells that secrete parathyroid hormone, which increase blood calcium. And this is done in three different ways. By osteoclastic activity, possible indirect action to pull calcium out of the bones, increasing intestinal absorption of calcium, and also acting on the kidneys to conserve calcium and not urinate it out. So the thyroid and its associated structures are rather impressive, aren't they?